In this video, I'm gonna explain the exposure triangle, hopefully in a way that's unique and easy to understand. Best of all, we're gonna do this in less than 10 minutes. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up my friends, my name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV, it is wonderful having you here, it's wonderful being here, and we're diving straight into exposure. So look, lately I've gotten the question quite a bit, how do you get to the perfect exposure? I thought it'd be fun to do a series on this topic because arriving at that place, well, there's a few different things that I want you to understand. The first is the exposure triangle. So this is the first part in this series, and when we think exposure triangle, most of you probably already know that it consists of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And you know that the combination of settings between these three components is what makes up the brightness or the exposure of an image, right? We get that. But what we often forget is that each one of these components, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, all have artistic components as well. So what I want you to think about when you're thinking of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO is I want you to think of the exposure related function and I also want you to think of the artistic or compositional function of each of these as well. Let's talk first about shutter speed and the first piece of that we're gonna discuss is the exposure component of shutter speed. Now this is easy, right? A slower shutter speed is gonna leave that shutter door open longer and allow light to come in for a longer period of time onto the sensor or onto film and you get a brighter exposure. And on the flip side, Faster shutter speeds are gonna yield darker images because it's less time for that sensor or film to expose. Going forward, I'm just gonna make this simple and say sensor because all of this applies to film cameras, digital cameras, doesn't matter whether you're using the big guys or whether you're just using your phone, it applies. Now the artistic component of shutter speed is in motion. Do you want to show motion or would you like to freeze it? So you might choose a shutter speed of one 500th of a second to freeze somebody's laugh or their expression, right? But you might wanna go all the way up to one 4,000th or one 8,000th of a second if you want to freeze the motion that you would see in water. If you want to show motion, you might slow the shutter speed down to one 100th of a second or slower to pan with a moving object. You might even drop it down to seconds if you're shooting water and you wanna get that smooth effect or even minutes if you're doing astrophotography and shooting a nightscape. I want you to prioritize that artistic component of each of these settings in the exposure triangle. I'm gonna teach you how to do that in the next video. But for now, let's go ahead and jump now to aperture. The aperture is controlling how much light is going through the lens and is capable of reaching the sensor at any one particular time. Think of this like the faucet on your kitchen sink. When you open it all the way, this opens up that aperture or that opening inside of the faucet to allow as much water to flow as possible. Now you can close the faucet handle and this is equivalent to stopping down your lens and allowing less light or essentially the water comes out at a slower pace. You can continue to close that faucet down until the water comes out just as a drip. It's the exact same thing with your camera. Your aperture controls the flow of light, how much can pass through at one time whereas the shutter speed is gonna control the actual length of time. So on aperture, we have the flow or how much, and on shutter speed, we have the amount of time or the duration of that flow. Okay, but the artistic component of aperture is in depth of field. Do you want to achieve a shallow depth of field where your subjects are blurred from the background? If so, you're gonna shoot with wider open aperture settings, f1.2, f1.8, 2.0, 2.8. Those are all wide enough settings to separate your subject from the background. Now again, there are other things to consider here, but for now, we're gonna keep this simple. If you're working in a scene where you wanna keep all of the detail, you want everything sharp, then you're gonna close down the aperture further to give you a wide depth of field to keep everything in the image sharp. Finally, we get to ISO. Let's talk about the exposure function here. So ISO is gonna refer to the sensor's sensitivity to light. 
okay? Now, a lot of, again, deep and technical discussions can be had here. I want to keep this very simple, very straightforward, just what applies and what's practical in the real world. So in terms of exposure, let's say you've set your shutter speed to the desired speed to freeze a face, and you've set your aperture to f2.8, and you want that so that you have depth in the background but the image is still not bright enough. And what's gonna happen when you're raising the ISO is essentially increasing the sensitivity or you're increasing the brightness of the image without having to change aperture and shutter speed. So lower ISO settings are generally gonna be used when you're working outdoors in bright conditions and higher ISO settings are gonna be needed once you bring the camera indoors or once you're working in low light situations. But ISO also has an artistic component and that's what we kind of forget or we tend to think of it in this way. So in terms of its artistry, ISO controls the amount of detail and color within an image. If you shoot at the lowest native ISO setting, and you can find that by looking it up online, but shooting at the lowest native ISO setting in your camera, you're gonna yield the maximum amount of detail, dynamic range and color for your image. Each step up in your ISO setting is going to reduce detail, color, and dynamic range. I want you to think of this as an artistic component as well because sometimes it may make sense to intentionally shoot at higher ISOs even when maybe you don't need to. And some might say, well, why would you ever do that? I want you to think of ISO in this way because I want you to think of the intention behind a shot. If your goal is to maximize dynamic range to get as much detail as possible, you need to make sure that you're at that lowest native ISO. On the flip side, I've been in many shooting situations where I'm shooting something that's a little bit more soft, a little more airy, more vintage kind of feeling, and I'll leave my ISO a bit higher, 200, 400, even when I'm working out in bright conditions because I want a subtle amount of that softness and that grain to sort of add to the final look of the image. Now, some of you might say, well, why not just replicate film with a preset? Yes, obviously you can, and this is completely at your discretion. I find that if I combine shooting at a little bit of a higher ISO, when I'm going towards that look and intention, I get a much more organic look. I get a better final product once I apply the final look in post-production. This is the way that I want you to think of the exposure triangle, and I want you to actually bias the artistic component of each of these things. I want you to bias your compositional needs over everything else then work your way back into getting the right exposure. In the next video in this series, I'm gonna show you guys the process of working through and getting to that place. So for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this little primer on understanding the exposure triangle. Hopefully it was new and unique to you. If it was, I'd love to hear your comments below. And if there's other topics or subjects you want me to discuss, post those below too. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. Feel free to share the video. And if you guys would like to learn more about our education, well, what you're learning here is actually a part of our full-length Photography One series on SRLoungeWorkshops.com. In the meanwhile, I'll see you guys back here in a week on Adorama TV. Bye.